Well, it's time for another one of my copper hoarding hunts. I picked up $35 worth of pennies. Uh, of course, a regular box is $25, and we got $10 extra dollars. But about half of them are customer rolled, and so I don't know what to expect. You never do. I hope if they did pull out the wheat pennies that they left the copper behind, but we'll find out soon enough. I have 75 pounds of copper, and my goal is to see how quickly I can get that built up to 100 pounds of copper. And um, we'll see how many. I'm hoping to find 4 pounds today. That would be pretty cool. Add it over to this. Once this one gets 25 pounds, I'll seal it up and stick it over with my others. And I'm more than halfway there now. Uh, let's see here. Hey, we're getting close. So we'll get started here right away. Now I have my usual setup ready. Today's copper, my 1982s, and my zinc, my castoffs. And we'll get started. Well, this is my first roll. As you can see, that's not a great sign. In the first roll, I got one copper U.S. penny. I did find a Canadian, and it's copper, one of the newer 12-sided ones. It was an 89. Yeah, 1989. So I hope they're not all like this. It was cool to see the Canadian right away, though. Well, the second row does have a few coppers in it, but look at this. I was surprised. There's even a wheat penny there. Huh. Kind of caught me off guard. What we got? 1956D, it looks like. Well, that was a pleasant surprise. There's one. Hey there. Hey, I wanted to tell you to keep watching because as we're going through this video searching for the uh, copper and the wheat pennies, I'm going to tell you a few more things that I learned about copper and the legalities of the copper uh, that may make you want to uh, reconsider if you're not hoarding copper already, why maybe you should be. So keep watching. I'm a few more rolls in. I am finding some copper, which is, is good, but I just came across my second Canadian. It is a 1981. And if you know, I classify my Canadian copper pennies. They're all 98% copper, but the pennies themselves have a different weight. And the 53 to 79 is the heaviest. 80 and 81 is next. And then the lightest of the 98% coppers are the 12-sided ones. And they're all fun to get, but I just I classify them differently. I got a few full rolls, and these are the ones that I fill as I go. Uh, today's price of copper um, is up a little bit higher than it was a couple days ago. It is now 2.4 cents copper value per penny, whereas a couple days ago it was like, oh, what's that? Well, that's, oh. It's been flattened down. I've seen a few of these. But it's gone up. It's, it's down from uh, a few months ago. They were worth just almost three cents each. Right now they're just worth 2.4 cents each. But it's, you know, as, as the price goes up, if you look over the last 40 years, copper's gone up a lot. And as the dollar is getting less valuable and other variables happen, it will continue to go up, but it's it's always bouncing up and down all along the way. There's this lot of zinc there. There's an 82 that will weigh. I try to pull them out of the uh, paper roll in an order so I can go through them smoothly. This one busted out of my hands, but immediately I saw that. Let's see what year it is. Nineteen thirty-six, Philadelphia. Well, that's really cool. One of the things that uh, I was uh, looking into on the whole copper hoarding thing was legalities and whatnot. That's a D copper. Anyway, um, you know the question is, can you melt down? Um, U.S. currency, copper. The the answer is yes, you can, but you cannot 
just melt it down for the purpose of selling it for its copper content alone. Just just melting silver, making copper ingots, and then just selling it for the copper content. That is illegal. But you can melt it down and not sell it and make something and just hold it until the day that something might change. Or you can make um, little figurines or your own coins that are stamped with your name on it that you would sell not for the copper, but for the collectability of it. And you say, well, I don't know if that's true or not. Have you ever gone into like a souvenir shop or something like that? And you can take a penny and stick it in a machine and roll it through and flatten it up. That's not illegal. You can make changes to U.S. currency for purposes like that. And so you can do it with all the, the rings. I mean, you see rings being made out of quarters and silver dollars and half dollars and all kind of stuff. And that's not illegal because you're creating your own personal item that you're allowed to resell. And so that's perfectly legal, legal with U.S. currency. You can't just melt it. You can't take a, let's see, what's the law? You cannot take more than $5 worth of pennies into another country, whereas in another country you could melt it down for whatever you wanted to. So I just thought I would bring those things out. And so it does give you options. Uh, you know, copper is going to keep going up. It is, a, it is a store of value, just like silver and gold is. And you can store it away until uh, things change. You can sell it at a profit today. There are people who buy um, copper pennies. And, you know, and they'll want a little bit of a discount from their actual copper value, but it is higher than the single one penny value. So there is a profit to be made in hoarding copper right now and in a, in a much bigger profit if you hold it for the future. Well, I got to say, so far I'm pretty pleased with the customer road. Here is my third wheat penny, 1945 of Philadelphia. And it's a guy, nice one, too. It's in really good shape. Really good shape. Finding more copper. And this one, here's an older, uh, from 1973, that's really, really kept its um, luster, I guess you would say. Yeah, there's just some decent copper here. Another thing that I wanted to bring up, uh, and this is potentially um, going to make the coins more valuable in the nearer future, is uh, Congress is considering to do like what Canada did and dropping the penny altogether. Once they do that, then you will have the legality of melting them for the copper content. I, I think they will still remain a legal U.S. currency, but because they don't make this coin anymore, I believe that opens up the legality of melting it if you so choose. And uh, who knows, you know, that could be right around, could be several years, it could be right around the corner. It's hard to say, but it is something that Congress is looking at as we speak. I just found my third copper Canadian. It's one of the 12-sided ones. I just get a kick out of finding these coins. It's just fun for me. It's, I guess it ain't that much bigger deal than finding a copper U.S. penny, but it's just something I like. <laughs> One of the little fun things of the hobby for me. Well, the copper is not as nearly as bad as I was expecting it to be. There's the 82. After the uh, first roll, I popped open with a oh boy. Copper.
Yeah, not bad at all. There's another one. There's number four. I don't know what year that one is yet. 1963. How cool. Also found one of the 2019s. I said the last time I want to try to get a set of these put together because I hadn't saved one. So I'll, I'll see how many of these I found today. I've had a few people ask me, um, why don't I buy one of those machines that separates the copper from the zinc? And that would be because of the cost. Right now, this is just a hobby for me. And uh, those things cost several hundred dollars. It'd be a whole lot of copper I would use up to buy one of those. If I decided to make some type of business out of it, I'd invest in one. But as a hobby, I'll just sit here and go through them. Look at this. I have not yet gone through $10 worth of the pennies, and this is my wheat penny number four. What I got there? 1949. Nice. Very cool. Very next roll, number five, uh, 58D. Two rolls later, weedy number six, and it's getting an older, 1935, Philadelphia. Boy, it'd be cool to find a couple that goes into my Lincoln scent books today. That was very cool. Ah, come on. Kappa. Kappa. I just love finding this right behind this copper penny here. I found a dime. Oh, that's so fun. There's copper. Another copper. Eighty two, gotta weigh it. Eighty. Okay, the next uh set of uh five dollars that was rubber banded that I've opened a couple of them already. Found some pretty good copper, no weedies yet. Um just found a Canadian, yep, right there, but I think this one is not copper. 1998, yeah, I believe it stopped in 96. But look at this. 1979 S. Except for that spot right there, just below his neck. That thing is just about perfect. That is a great, uh preserved penny there. I think I'll have to hold on to this. This penny looks like it got an acid wash or something. I don't know if it came like that. Probably some aftermarket. <clears throat> I went through that last uh, $5 worth of pennies that were rubber banded up that were customer road. Quite a bit of copper, but no wheat pennies. I did find this other 12-sided um, copper Canadian and I just now, I'm into some bankroll now in that next set. And I just came across another 12 sided Canadian 1987. Very, very cool. I'm finding a pretty good amount of copper, too. I've gone through a few of these rolls already. No weedies yet, but a decent amount of copper. Pretty pleased with it. There's one there. Uh, but it says 90. Copper. Copper. Here's a copper. Here we go. Wheat penny number seven, 1945. Very cool. Still got a long way to go. 
Oh, I think I see a Canadian back here. There's a copper. Yep, right there. Nineteen eighty one copper. Nice. Way. Copper. Copper and copper. Okay, here's the last five dollars worth of the customer roll. Then we've got ten dollars left of the bank road. Uh, at the end of those last few rolls, I found another copper Canadian. 1956. Cool. That's a pretty old one. Got a lot of copper coins over here today. I mean, uh, Canadian copper coins. And one not copper. Anyway, we'll see uh, if we can still reach that 10 wheat pennies. That's what I'm, I'm hoping for. Along with four pounds of copper, if that's possible. I'm finding some silver in these. Um, this particular set of... Uh, Customer rolled coins there. There's a 74S that's in mighty good condition. And also found, I guess they had made this into some type of necklace or something. I don't remember seeing one like this one before. Uh, this is how many copper coins I got in the last 10 rolls at $5 worth of customer rolled. I feel like that might be slightly under par. Uh, one difference is I got no Canadian and no Wheaties out of that either. So... I just found another uh, Canadian copper penny, 1972. Also wanted to show you that what I did find what I talked about a while back. I got the entire set of the uh, Lincoln Memorial 2009, the four penny set. That was kind of fun, finding all four of those. Yeah, that's a mess. I'm still not getting my... Ten wheat pennies. I hope that three more shows up. It's copper. Well, finally, I just came across a uh, wheat penny number eight, and so uh, we got a ways to go. So there's still a good chance that I'm going to get that ten that I was looking for. I thought those nice looking coins. Looks like another Canadian copper. 1972. Look at all of them. That's quite a few. Cool beans. Still a few rows to go yet. And there is Wheat Penny number 9. A 1940. Aha! Right at the end of this row, we found number 10. Let's see what year it is. Oh, 1938. Pretty nice. Nice coin. Next next row, I find my 11th Canadian copper. This is one of the 12-sided uh, ones. 1991. Some copper here. Oh, an 82. I weigh them. I wish I didn't find so many of them. Second to the last row, and there's number. Oh, oops, number 11. Let's see what year it is. Nineteen. 40 something was kind of scratched up. I also found another 12 sided Canadian copper. 1941. Alright. Right at the beginning of the last row, and look at this. 
1920, over 100 years old. That makes 12 weeds. Wow, that's really cool. 1920. I've seen more and worse than that in 1920. Hey, about halfway through this last row, I found one more. Weedy. 1944. That's 13. That's pretty good. Pretty good. Quite a bit of copper was in the first part of that section. I mean, it was an 80, 82. Got a bunch of them. Wow. 82. <laughs> copper. Copper. It's a nice one. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to weigh these 82s, get this copper out of them, weigh them, and see how much we have. <clears throat> I have weighed all of the uh, 1982 uh, pennies and added the copper ones to today's copper. And I got just over 3.9 pounds. I didn't quite hit the 4 pounds I was hoping for, but not far off. Pretty good amount of copper that I will add to my box and weigh that. See how close I am to the 25 pounds on that one. I found the 13 wheat pennies, and one of them did go into my older Lincoln Scent book. It's the 1938 Philadelphia. Very cool to add one more to my book. This one needs a lot. Long way to go. I haven't been adding to it a lot the last couple of years. So now that I'm penny copper hoarding, I've added a few. Pretty cool. I've separated out my um, Canadian copper pennies to go into their different weight bracket, bracket of years. And I'll get those put in there. I also found the um, 2009 four. Lincoln Memorial coins. They're kind of fun to find those. Got my dime. <laughs> and a few of the older copper pennies that are in just super, super shape. And I'll put those in a case just to keep them very nice. Pretty good uh, addition today. I'm pretty satisfied. Hope you enjoy watching. And uh, we'll get some more pennies real soon. And I'll see how quickly I can get to my 100 pounds of copper.